Hi everybody, it's time for part two of uh, the color theory assignment. So last week, hopefully you were able to identify colors and create a color scheme that obeyed a color rule. So something like a monochromatic color scheme or an analogous color scheme or a complementary or split complementary color scheme. Uh, so this week we're gonna take what you did last week and apply it to an actual piece of graphic design. So how you do this is up to you. If you're in grade 11, I'm just looking for some basic color adjustment things. Um, if you're in grade 12, I want you to push it a little bit farther and uh, create something like uh, a fashion piece or an interior design or uh, a mood board. It's really up to you. So um, there's many, many ways to do this assignment depending on what you're interested in and what kind of software you have access to. So I don't want to limit you. Um, and I am available on uh, Google Meet or Hangouts or whatever they're calling it these days to walk you through specific questions that you have. Um, so just drop me a line if uh, that's something that you need or that's something that you're interested in. Um, so. The first part of this assignment for both grades, you're just going to be reviewing what you did in the last assignment. So you're going to give your exact color names. So either your RGB or CMYK values, um, your hexadecimal code, or your Pantone color name. Uh, whichever one is totally fine for this assignment. And on most software, you can find uh, that name pretty easily. So you're just going to, uh, do your color names and then you're going to tell me what kind of color scheme you came up with. So the next thing that you're going to do in part two is you're going to actually apply it. So I've got an example with the lovely flamingo on the grade 11 assignment and the running shoe on the grade 12 assignment. And I'm going to just kind of show you some ways to do it. So you don't need to do this this way. There's like many, many ways to choose colors and do color adjustments depending on what kind of project you're working on. So I'm gonna just show you a couple. Don't feel that you need to do those. So the first one I'm gonna look at is really, really basic, easy color adjustment in Photoshop. So I'm gonna start off in Photoshop with a color image. So we've got this adorable little cat here. My own cat is very jealous. She shouldn't be, she's way cuter. And the first thing that I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna convert them to black and white. So I'm gonna go up to image adjustments and I can choose either black or white or I can do hue saturation. So I'm gonna do black and white because it gives me a little bit more flexibility with the tones. And uh, so you can see I can decide to have more or less reds, yellows, greens, um, and basically I wanna get it so it looks kind of nice and contrasty. So I'm gonna just mess around with it. Um, there we go, and sort of get it so that it's got a nice range of tones in the image. Okay, so now he's black and white, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the bottom of my layers palette, and I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to paint on top of this photo using the colors that I've chosen. So it's just a reminder, I had a split complementary color scheme last week, and I'm gonna just copy and paste the names of the colors that I suggested. So I'm going to copy it, go into my color picker, and just paste that red that was my first color that I came up with. And um, I'm gonna take my paintbrush, and literally I'm gonna paint over it. Now this looks kinda bad. That's okay, bear with me. So I'm gonna just take my red that I created and I'm painting with my mouse right now, so it's kind of an inexact process. But because I'm doing it on a new layer, the nice thing about this is that if I mess up, like if I go over it, I can erase it and it's not gonna affect the photo underneath. So I'm gonna just finish that off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the blending mode. So right now this looks kind of flat and ugly and I wanted to pick up the tones of the black and white image underneath it. So where it says normal over here on the layers palette, I'm going to change that to 
either uh, darken or multiply or overlay, basically depending on what ends up looking the best. So it's probably darkened in this case. And then I'm gonna just go in with my eraser and it would help if I clicked on my eraser. There's my eraser. Um, and just sort of fix up the edges a little bit uh, so that it's perfect. And if I'm finding this red is too strong because the image underneath is really dark, I can also go into the opacity, which is next to the blending modes, and just reduce the opacity a little bit uh, so that it's a little bit less um, jarring. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to find my next color and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go into my color picker again, paste it. And then I'm going to use that color. And my bloody mode is already set on multiply with a lower opacity. So I can just add a little bit of color. If I wanted to add more color than that, I could make a new layer. And again, I'm going to set it to multiply, but this time I'm going to have the opacity at 100% so that I can just create a more striking yellow. Um, and then I'm going to choose my last color and go into my color picker and get this blue. And maybe I'll do the background in blue. So I'm going to take my paintbrush make it a little bit bigger because I got a lot of background to cover. And create my background cover on it. And uh, so this is a pretty easy way to do color adjustment. I've been told it's a bit of a cheesy effect. Um, it's not used very much these days. It's like a very old timey looking uh look for it but i don't know i always liked it so if you want to do that um so you can see i've got my three colors um if you wanted to as well you can use variations of your colors so let's say i wanted to have a lighter blue on the cat's fur i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to go into the color that i picked but instead of this sort of mid-tone blue i'm going to just make it a bit brighter and maybe I'm going to reduce my opacity a little bit. And again, change my blending mode to multiply. And I'm just gonna give like a slight little blue tint to the kitty here. Uh, so you can basically do variations of your colors as long as I'm seeing the colors that you picked in there somewhere. And let's just give them a little bit of a blue cast. So there's one way to do it. Um, the other way that, um, that I used in the grade 12 assignment was to change the colors of a color image. So in this case, uh, what I did was I used uh, the Vans website, which is really fun, to create um, a custom running shoe, and then I adjusted the colors in that. So if you're creating something that's like um, if article of clothing or if you go into um, interior design a lot of paint websites will have uh, rooms that you can design and change the color of the scheme around um, that's another way that you could do this so i'm going to just quickly go into the vans website and show you what i did all right so this is the vans customizer site and as you can see they'll let you change the colors of the shoes but they don't let you choose the specific colors that you want. So you just basically click on them and you can change them to different colors. Um, so what I was doing with mine was I just clicked on them and I looked for colors that were uh, similar enough that adjusting them wouldn't be too much of a pain. So I don't remember exactly what but this looks kind of good. And, all right, so this is basically the same color scheme that I'd set up. Colors are not perfect though, I want the exact colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot and I'm going to open up my screenshot that I just created in Photoshop. Okay, so now we're back in Photoshop and I've pulled up my screenshot that I just took 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it so the colors are exactly the same as in my color scheme. So um, what I'm going to be using is a tool called Replace Color. So I'm going to take an existing color and I'm going to replace it with the exact color that I want. So again, I'm going to go into my color scheme and I'm going to select the exact color. Um, so I'm going to go into Image, Adjustments, and Replace Color. And I'm going to select my red. And you'll see that it gives me the option to mess around with how much red is selected. And I can change the hue and the saturation and the lightness to different colors. But what I can also do is I can click on where it says results and it'll bring up my color picker and I can put in the exact color that I want to use. Hit okay and hit okay again. And it'll adjust it to that specific color that I've used in my color scheme. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the blue. And so I'm gonna select the blue. Again, I want it pretty fuzzy so that it's getting the shadows and the midtones. And I'm going to change the result to the blue and then do the same with the gold. And essentially I can change all of the different colors in this image to match the specific color scheme that I've created. The last option that you have, or well, one of the many options, is if you're more interested in something like logo design or um, page design or typography or something like that, you can also use a vector illustration program. So something like Illustrator or Inkscape if you couldn't install Illustrator. And you can again use the color picker to get the exact color that you chose. And you can use the shape tools or the type tools or really any tools that you want to create elements of a logo design. And you can use your color scheme to change colors to whatever it is that you want. Um, so, you know, what you create is a logo, totally up to you. You can uh, create a logo for your own brand or redesign an existing brand or, um, or you know, really do whatever you want with, with that. Um, so if you did the Illustrator assignment early on, this is pretty much the same kind of thing. So you're looking at creating shapes, blocks, and colors. Um, if you go to the color palette, you can also see, um, you know, you can use your color picker as RGB or CMYK if you wanted to do that. And if you go to swatches, which is just above that, you will see that um, there's swatch libraries. So if you wanted to create um, something based on a Pantone system, you can click on color books and you'll see all of the Pantone colors listed and you can change how they're listed. I do it by name, usually, large list view. Um, and you can see all of the different Pantone swatches. So that's, uh, if you're actually looking into going into graphic design, that's a system that you probably want to become familiar with. So you can use that as well to create your system. Okay, um, hope this helped. I hope this made sense. Um, like I said, you can always reach me if you want to do a live video chat and do a screen share with me and show me what it is you're working on. You can do that too. So um, reach out, ask for help if you need it, and um, I look forward to seeing what you design.